Just a few years ago, China's aviation industry relied almost entirely on foreign engines from General Electric and Russia's United Engine Corporation. But today, that story is changing fast. The CJ-1000A, a completely homegrown Chinese jet engine, has just passed critical testing milestones and it could soon replace Western power plants on the Comac C919. This isn't just about aviation. This is about breaking free from technology embargoes, reshaping global supply chains, and redefining who controls the skies. If the CJ-1000A succeeds, it will send shockwaves through Boeing, Airbus, and every engine maker in the West. For decades, China's commercial aviation ambitions were held back by one critical bottleneck, engines. Aircraft like the Comac C919, China's answer to the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737, could be built domestically, but they still relied heavily on foreign-made power plants. In the case of the C919, that engine is the CFML EAP1C, jointly produced by General Electric and Safran of France. As the geopolitical landscape grew more hostile, especially after sanctions on Chinese tech firms like Huawei and restrictions on military aviation components, China knew it needed more than a domestic airframe. It needed a domestic heart. That heart is the CJ-1000A, a high-bypass turbofan engine being developed by the Aero Engine Corporation of China, AECC. First announced in 2012, the engine is designed to deliver 25,000 to 30,000 pounds of thrust, directly competing with the Leap and Pratt & Whitney's GTF engines. But development hasn't been easy. The CJ-1000A had to overcome countless engineering challenges, including material science barriers and turbine blades that must withstand temperatures exceeding 1,600 degrees Celsius. China has poured billions into metallurgy, computer modeling, and manufacturing precision, all to catch up with an industry the West has been refining for over 50 years. What really turned heads recently was the CJ-1000A's reported completion of full-engine ground testing and high-altitude simulations. State media even claimed in early 2025 that the engine is entering the certification phase, bringing it one step closer to commercial service. Although full ETOP certification and international approvals are still years away, the mere fact that the CJ-1000A is now spinning under its own power is a major symbolic moment. If this engine reaches commercial readiness before 2030, it could mark a complete reshaping of the global aircraft market. China would not only stop depending on Western technology for its airliners, but also start competing head-to-head -head in one of the most advanced fields of manufacturing on Earth. And that has everyone, from Boeing's boardroom to the Pentagon, paying very close attention. The significance of China's CJ-1000A goes far beyond a simple technical achievement. This engine represents a geopolitical chess move years in the making, a direct response to the West's growing dominance over the critical components that power modern aviation. For China, building its own turbofan engine isn't just about pride or economics. It's about security, sovereignty, and the ability to break free from sanctions and technology blockades. For decades, companies like General Electric, Rolls-Royce, and Pratt & Whitney have controlled the jet engine market, and by extension, the future of global civil aviation. Even Russia, once a major aerospace player, now struggles to field a modern commercial engine. China, however, has taken a different path. Instead of collapsing under pressure, it has funneled state resources into developing a fully indigenous alternative. The CJ-1000A project has received direct support from the Chinese government, with funding estimated to exceed $20 billion. That includes everything from specialized alloy production plants to state-of-the-art test facilities. The stakes are enormous. Currently, the aviation engine market is one of the most profitable segments in aerospace, generating billions annually from sales, maintenance, and parts. If China succeeds in entering this market, it threatens the near-monopoly Western manufacturers have enjoyed for decades. The CJ-1000A could not only power domestic aircraft like the C919 and its wide-body sibling, the C929, but it could also be exported to other countries looking to reduce their dependency on US-controlled technology. Think of nations like Iran, Venezuela, or even some African carriers, all of whom have faced sanctions or limitations from Western suppliers. While the GE Leap and Pratt and & Whitney GTF engines are the undisputed leaders in today's narrow-body market, the CJ-1000A is not simply a copycat. China has learned from decades of reverse engineering and global partnerships, and as a result, the CJ-1000A incorporates several unique features that reflect its own design philosophy and industrial strategy. First, let's talk materials. One of the biggest challenges in engine development 
is creating turbine blades that can withstand extreme temperatures without deforming or cracking. China struggled with this in the past, but recent breakthroughs in single crystal super alloy production have drastically improved performance. Unlike earlier engines like the WS10, the CJ1000A uses world-class domestically developed alloys in its high-pressure turbines, the heart of the engine. These blades are reportedly cooled using advanced internal airflow channels, a feature previously seen only in Western-made engines. Second, aerodynamics. The CJ1000A boasts a large diameter composite fan with swept blades designed for fuel efficiency and lower noise levels. The engine's bypass ratio is believed to be around 10 to 1, on par with the CFM LEAP, which helps reduce CO2 emissions and improve thrust-to-weight performance. Not only does this give the C919 competitive range and efficiency, but it also aligns with global aviation trends pushing for greener, quieter engines. Third, digital control. Modern jet engines rely on full-authority digital engine control FADEC systems to optimize performance. China's FADEC, reportedly co-developed with AVIC, allows real-time adjustments based on flight conditions, much like its Western counterparts. This is essential not just for safety, but also for reducing long-term costs, a crucial factor in winning over airlines. But perhaps the most interesting element is China's vertically integrated supply chain. Unlike Western engine makers that rely on hundreds of global suppliers, the CJ1000A is built almost entirely within China, from fan blades to fuel systems. This means fewer points of failure and more control over the entire life cycle of the engine. When combined with state subsidies and a massive domestic market, China is building not just an engine but an ecosystem. In essence, the CJ1000A isn't just a technological leap. It's China's declaration that it's no longer content with buying engines. It wants to build the future of flight. The ripple effects of China's CJ-1000A go far beyond its own borders. If successful, this engine and the aircraft it powers could disrupt multiple layers of the global aviation industry. At the top of the list of those who should be worried, the Western engine duopoly, GE Safran and Pratt and Whitney. Currently, Engine manufacturing is one of the most profitable segments in aerospace. The real money isn't just in selling engines, it's in maintaining them. Companies like GE Aviation make over half their profits from long-term service contracts that lock airlines in for decades. If China can offer competitive engines and maintenance at lower prices, or even include them as part of a nation-to-nation -nation deal, it could steal market share not because of superior technology, but because of geopolitical and economic leverage. The threat goes even deeper for Boeing and Airbus. The Comac C919, once fully paired with the CJ-1000A, becomes an export-ready aircraft not limited by U.S. export controls. Emerging markets like Southeast Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, where cost is critical and political alliances shift fast, could see the C9019 an affordable alternative to the Airbus A320neo or Boeing 737 MAX. And China is no stranger to sweetening deals with financing, airport infrastructure, or technology transfers. Even Russia should be watching closely. For years, China relied on Russian engines for both military and civil applications. But with CJ-1000A and its upcoming wide-body sibling, the CJ-2000, China is becoming self-reliant. That could marginalize Russia's United Engine Corporation on the global stage and leave it with fewer export opportunities. Finally, there's the impact on global aviation standards. If the Civil Aviation Administration of China, CAAC, develops its own certification ecosystem and countries begin accepting Chinese certified aircraft engines, it could eventually create an alternative to the FAA and EASA. That's a seismic change that challenges not just markets, but the regulatory foundation of aviation itself. To the West, the CJ-1000A is more than an engineering project. It's a challenge to global influence. And for the first time, there's a real possibility China could win, not just on cost, but on capability, reliability, and political power. Today, few passengers in Japan even remember the 787-3, but inside Boeing's history, its absence speaks louder than its existence. The aircraft was supposed to symbolize unity between the US and Japan, a testament to decades of collaboration. Instead, it became a quiet reminder of how fragile trust can be in the world of aviation. ANA and JAL moved on, integrating the 787-8 and 787-9 into their fleets, while Airbus slowly built its presence through the A350. 
The balance that had once seemed eternal, Boeing's dominance and Japan's loyalty, was replaced by competition. Ironically, the Dreamliner still fulfilled part of its promise. It transformed aviation efficiency. But the variant built for Japan, the 787-3, never took flight beyond prototypes. If you want to keep watching this story unfold and see what comes next for COMAC, Boeing, and the global engine race, hit subscribe, drop a like, and let's keep flying through the future together.